Mm -hmm. uh, in the 1960s, pirate radio changed the face of broadcasting. It was revolutionary for playing continuous music, imagine that, and launched the careers of Tony Blackburn, John Peel and Kenny Everett. But 50 years ago today, pirate radio stations became illegal and they were forced to close down. Breakfast Tim Muffet joins us now from a mock pirate ship in Essex. Good morning. Yes, good morning to you from the decks of the LV-18, a former light vessel moored on the water here in Harwich this morning. Now, if you saw the 2009 film, The Boat That Rocked, all about pirate radio, it might look a little familiar because this ship was actually used in that film. And as you say, 50 years ago today, a law came into force, the Marine Offences Act. It sought to illegalise pirate radio. These ships which had gone out to sea in the 60s and broadcast pop music to try and circumvent the laws which prevented that music from being broadcast. They had a huge impact. I remember going out from Harwich and seeing this little boat floating around and I thought this is going to alter the whole of broadcasting in this country. Tony Blackburn's prediction was right. In the early 60s, the BBC played hardly any pop commercial radio was banned. By broadcasting from international waters, pirate stations like Caroline, Radio London and Swinging Radio England exploited a loophole. We were three and a half miles off the coast of Frinton. We flew under the Panamanian flag. Now, if anybody went on that boat uh, from this country, it was like declaring war on Panama. <laughs> this was Radio Caroline's London HQ, where Tony Blackburn had his first audition. Did you have any sense of what a big deal this was going to be for you and, and mm. for pop culture? Yes, I did, yeah. I, I really thought that this was going to be uh, the start of something very big. Good morning, everyone. Tony Blackburn here with you. Feeling a little under the weather this morning. We've got a, about an eight-force gale out there. Keep on running. Broadcasting pop music from ships like this out at sea, the pirate stations were very popular. But on land, they weren't just winning over millions of fans, they also faced a powerful enemy, the government. The pirates are a menace, and I don't believe at all that uh, the public wouldn't support action to enforce the law. At midnight on the 14th of August 1967, the Marine Offences Act became law. It was now illegal for British citizens to work on the ships or to supply them. Johnny Walker had recently joined Caroline. Tony, look at that. You look so young. I haven't changed, have I? <laughs> there were fun times. Yeah. And I'm sure there were those in the government that really liked the fact there were pirates on the air, and, and certainly the, the, the young people and their families all loved it. It bridged all generations and all social classes. Many pirate stations packed up, but Caroline continued broadcasting from the sea until 1990. It anchored further into international waters to avoid UK regulations. This ship, the Ross Revenge, was its studio throughout the 80s. This is Caroline in the afternoon. It's recently returned to the water. What we wanted to do is return the ship to a useful broadcasting purpose because while we dine out on our nostalgia, which is our selling point, we also want to now look to the future. This is Radio Caroline, the sound of the who. Having been streamed online since the late 90s, the station's just been granted a new AM broadcast licence. 50 years after the law that tried to ban them, Britain's pop pirates are back on the water. Now that ship, the Ross Revenge, is moored about 40 miles south from here. This ship, the LV-18, has been commandeered by BBC Radio Essex and it will be linking up later on with Radio Caroline. Let's have a quick chat to Roger Day. Now you were on board Radio Caroline, weren't you, when that law came into to force. You're going to be broadcasting today. What was it like being a pirate at sea? Good morning, Tim. Thanks for joining us here. A special day. Uh, that day was, it was sad and it was happy because we didn't know what the government were going to do. Most of the stations were closing down, but us naughty boys, we were carrying on, risking a fine, jail sentence, and that was just for playing pop music on the radio, for goodness sake. It seems unbelievable now. But we were excited because we knew the public were with us. 
I have it on good authority that the government at the time used to get more complaints about banning us than they did about the <laughs> Vietnam War, the economy or anything else as well, and they still banned us. Now, in a way, music is everywhere now, isn't it? It's so easy to access. Have, have we lost the magic, do you think, of, of broadcasting from a, from a ship? It seems odd in itself. Well, it's lost a lot of that magic because it's, it's too, well, it's homogenised now, you know, and I mean, there's, they've taken a lot of the fun out of it. In those days, we had one, thanks to Ronan, who set it all up and had the dream, bless him, uh, we were just just told get out there and entertain it was a bit like Matt Busby the Man United he used to say just go out and entertain the fans and we we had the same theory now Roger I know you've got some prep to do for your show this I morning have. so we'll let you carry on as I say there's going to be an historic tie-up between Radio Essex BBC Radio Essex and Radio Caroline a little later on today a kind of coming together if you like of the BBC the official broadcasting and the pirate radio as well but they're all kind of friends now I think they put it all that behind them it's an historic day in the world of broadcasting but from a beautiful Harwich on board the LV-18 I'll, I'll leave you now and we'll, we'll speak to, we'll be speaking to more DJs a little later on this morning. It looks lovely. Johnny Walker meets the Pirates is on BBC Radio 2 tonight at 10 o'clock. And uh, with that beautiful shot of the Stewart estuary there, we're going to leave you for a moment and get some news, some travel and some weather wherever you're watching across the UK. We'll see you with the national headlines in just a few minutes' time.